Jamie Boyd, congratulations. You guys are in the final round of this Christmas-themed competition. Now, we're sending you back to your home forges to recreate this iconic weapon from history. The 1796 British Light Cavalry Sabre. Next stop, I'll be pre-testing the 1796 British Light Cavalry Sabre. Light Cavalry Sword means something that you should be able to use in horseback. It's supposed to be light. So when you're thinking about moving with this, if it's a heavy sword and you're on horseback, you take that into consideration. Can I wield this while riding a horse? And when you're going with speed, you're able to cut and find out what does a curved blade do this way and what kind of damage does it do in motion? So the media is a big carcass, it's skin. Can a slashing weapon cut all the way through? Or is it just gonna chop? Or is it definitely gonna be devastating with a single strike? The 1796 English Light Cavalry Sword was first used by British Dragoons in the Napoleonic Wars. Unlike the subtly bowed French Cavalry Sabres of the era, the English version had a deep curve whose width increased as it reached the tip. Although this design weakened the blade's thrusting capabilities and made every slash heavier and more brutal. Designed to inflict maximum damage during large melees on the battlefield, the Sabre had the ability to remove heads and limbs with a single stroke. The Light Cavalry Sword is the weapon of the traditional wooden Christmas nutcracker and can be seen at the iconic soldier's side in the latest film adaptation of the Tchaikovsky Nutcracker Ballet, The Nutcracker in the Four Realms. Ready? We use a lot of pig carcasses because the pig is the closest thing to the human body. I mean, we're going straight against skin over here. It allows us to really get and see the cuts. There's no hair on the pig. So when it's weapon against skin, you really see how it lacerates, how it punctures, and how you can see the wound channel. When I look at it, I go, wow, that's a deeper cut than that of the other guy. So it gives me a great basis of comparison. Remember, when I'm doing these tests, it's not about my skill. It's about me letting the weapon do its own damage. One thing though, you know, it's all about the respect of the animal. At the end of the test, I was bowed to death and say thank you. And of course, every medium or meats and fishes are always donated to the wildlife conservation. So I don't feel so bad. I know that we're feeding the wolves. All right, gentlemen, good luck. We'll see you in four days. Good luck. My name is Jamie Chandler. I have a BFA at metalsmithing. That's probably gonna be my edge in this competition because Having three hours to make a knife is how I learned how to make a knife. The goal today is to just get the standby billet put together and then stretch out the bill as much as I possibly can so tomorrow I can really break it home. And there it is. I officially burned my billet into two pieces and I am definitely falling behind on the clock. I started my day off with 70% of yesterday's billet. I want to stick. For whatever reason, I cannot get the metals to fuse. My small failures are compounding into catastrophes. It's do or die time. Bail on the sand mine. I have to start over again. I go in my junk pile and I find a nice two inch bar of tool steel. I'm very disappointed. I have to give up on my original sand mine construction, but I have to make something that I can actually finish. I don't even have the sword blade yet. My emergency plan is I'm taking two pieces of mild steel and making a sand my billet on the tang end of my carbon steel billet in order to be able to draw it out long enough. <sighs> Man. I cannot believe this thing just cracked on me. I've used the technique before and it, it works, but I'm running out of time. I, I can't just mess around with something that's not gonna work, so I abandon it and I just grab a leaf spring. Pressure is really on, but I'm gonna finish. I'm either gonna turn something in that I can be proud of or I'm not showing up and I'm, I'm showing up. I'm gonna finish a blade and I'm gonna go there and show them what I'm made of. Mama didn't raise no quitter. My name is Boyd Ritter. I'm a mechanical engineer from White Rock, New Mexico. At home, my son likes to come in and do the Will Willis countdown every time he's tired of me being in the garage by myself. I'm really uh, excited about Christmas, and hopefully I get a really good Christmas present at $10,000. I got all my seams closed. I'm going to bring it up to temperature. 
I start drawing out my billet. Everything on the power hammer is working excellent. So with the time I have left, I'm gonna get it cut. We're gonna go mono steel with the 5160. We're just gonna go all out and move as fast as we can. This is a really light weapon. It needs to stay a light weapon. I do have a lot to get done and a short amount of time. Luckily, I have my own personal Will Willis here. So at some point today, I will get a countdown and let me know when all of this is done. I'm gonna put Christmas on this handle. I think it's cool. Good job, buddy. Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. Keeping with this Christmas theme, I'm gonna take your weapons and deliver some slashes and chops on this Christmas ham. Jamie, you're up first. You ready for this? Let's do it. All right, Jamie, the first thing that I noticed is the extreme weight. Automatically, I can feel the stress on my hand. It wants to fall forward. Now let's talk about the blade. This is a chopper that gets work done in three chops. Your weapon, sir, will kill. Thank you. All right, Boyd, where you naughty or nice, because it's your turn. I don't know, <laughs> we'll see. All right, Boyd, you nailed the weight. This proves that a light, sharp blade is just as deadly as a heavier sword. Overall, sir, your nutcracker saber will keel. Thanks. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test. Now, to test the strength of your sabers, I will be chopping into this ice block. Jamie, you're up first. Are you ready? I am. biggest issue I have with your blade is its weight. But for this test, it's a strong blade. It held up, so good job. Thank you. All right, Boyd, you ready? Uh, I don't know. All right, so, Boyd, now, your blade's still sharp. It still has a perfect edge. Didn't take any damage that way. But we did pick up a bit of a warp towards the tip. I mean, it's definitely an issue. It's not so far out that it wouldn't cut. Everything else is still tight and together. Good job. Yes, sir. All right, Bladesmiths, now it's time to find out if there's any edge left in your weapon. This is the sharpness test, the Christmas tree trim. To find out how sharp your edges are, I will trim this tree in the Markaida family Christmas tree tradition. Jamie, you're up first. Are you ready for this? Trim away. All right, Jamie, let's talk about your edge here. It is a little bit on the obtuse side, and it's still heavy. But on every stroke, I'm able to trim this tree. Overall, sir, it will cut. Thank you. All right, Boyd, it's your turn. Are you ready to do some Christmas tree trimming? You bet.
All right, Boyd. So, your edge is sharp and the weight that you have for this, I didn't have to reset for every cut that I did. I just go up, cut up, cut up, and cut. Overall, sir, it'll cut. Thanks. Oh, absolutely. Jamie had issues with weight. I was good with weight, but my blade bent during the strength test. Right now, we're pretty even. So basically, it's down to a heavy blade and a bent blade, and I am just shaking in my boots. All right, gentlemen, the judges and I have had a quick conference, and they've made their final determination about which of you is the Forge and Fire champion and who has to leave the Forge. The bladesmith leaving the Forge is... Jamie. Now, unfortunately, Jamie, your blade did not make the cut. That's because it's very heavy and unwieldy, and for that reason, I have to ask you to please leave the Forge. I feel really disappointed, but I'm not surprised at all. I know how heavy my sword was. I just wish I could have done better. Boyd, congratulations. You are the Forge and Fire champion, and that is a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Merry Christmas, my friend. You got anything to say to the world? Uh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> All right, my friend, come on over and shake our hand. <laughs> I'm really happy the way that the sword turned out. I was a little nervous when I saw it take that bend, but I couldn't ask for a better performance out of it. $10,000 is a great Christmas gift to me. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. My, my son will be off the walls probably for the next month and a half. 